Hi, everyone. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm Mark Gatorberg, Stephen Hagen, and we're here to talk about VRD St. Lotus Presents 3. Friends and family. Yeah, it was a great time. We all got to hang out. We had a super long time actually drafting, uh, actually picking out the cards and putting the decks together. We so. didn't have staff. All the staff was working. So. Yeah, so next time next time we have better plans, uh, but it was a good time, and I'm glad we got to do it. Did you ever notice that my hey, how you doing is like the podcast voice? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> right. And then you should immediately go back it's to It's how yourself. we all talk on YouTube. It's what we do. You, know, you got to talk like a podcast. It's true. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think we're actually going to kind of reverse the interview seats and you're going to be uh, yeah, talking absolutely. about my deck this time. All right. So what, why don't we just start off then with the baseline question of well, tell me what it is you were planning on and thinking about as you came into the draft. Where was your mind going? Totally. So I always try to have like three primary ways of thinking about the draft, right? Um, I have a Lotus deck that I want to have walking into a deck, into a, into a draft, then I have an ancestral deck that I want to have if I'm in to fall into seat two, um, and then I also want to have a other <laughs> decks, yeah. and and those often are like very really variable, right? Like I, I if I am stuck in seat four, I'm probably going to be less combo oriented or like two card Monty oriented mm -hmm. than if I'm in seat eight. Um, but it also just like a lot of that stuff kind of depends. But I have a lot of decks that fall under the other, right? I, I think it's always a pretty good idea. You have the Lotus deck, the Ancestral deck, and then the, you know what? Because in those rest of the seats, it's like I can take whichever box, you know. At this totally. point, it's no longer like Sapphire has to go three. People do whatever they want, you know. It's like, okay, I can take whatever I want and, and be where I want to be depending on how I'm feeling and how things are going. That, I think that's exactly right. And I think it's like... The, the advantage of Sapphire is that you can forestall your second pit color for a while, whereas a lot of the other ones you have to kind of like be a little more committed. But even then, like an off color, like a Mox Crystal is really right. strong. But Sapphire also throws you immediately into the, I'm going to be competing for blue. Correct. Right. So blue being the best color, you always know it's going to have heavy competition. So it throws you into, so I mean, we have ostensibly five decks with blue in it here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so, so I, I had kind of, I, I had a whole bunch of decks ready um, and like, pretty ready right like the, the one that i was most excited about was actually a mono white um a mono white uh, like painter servant deck that used artifacts and had oswald fiddlebender and stuff nice. and it was a really good like dreadnought list that was used Luris. like i'm really high on Luris as a companion yeah we had a discord recently that had a i don't think it was mono white but it was a um a time vault deck that had mm -hmm. Luris and uh, Oswald in it. And it was the best time vault deck I've ever seen yes. because it had so many ways to get back the pieces, right? Like a lot of times, like I'm just, time vault's fine. I've drafted it twice and just decided to sideboard it. Mm -hmm. But like, it was the best time vault deck I've seen just because it was so ridiculous at how it could get the pieces from the deck and or get the pieces back. Yeah, and I mean, for this for this draft crew, I knew St. Lotus has Time Vault going much higher than the Discords do, so I, I, I knew I was not going to get Time Vault. Um, but anyway, that was one of my other decks. I also had, uh, like, I always want to play Black Green. It's my favorite deck in this format. And but you of, never do. I never do, right? I, <laughs> I always get boxed out of it, um, and I always get thrown into the blue things. It just sucks to have to go so early in the draft that you get Ancestral and Lotus all the time. Yeah. Um, well, there was a card I know, and I, when you know, you get to know players, right? So there was a card I know Cody is going to be drafting this weekend, and he asked for the list because he said, well, I have a card. And I want to know if this one person's there because that's going to determine where I take this card because nice. they're going to take it where they normally take it pretty relatively high. Right. And I need to know where I need to value this card at. You know? Totally. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. Uh, so, so yeah, I want, I always want to be in a black greenish deck. I, my other was very firmly like I knew no one else would be in this Luris deck that I wanted to be in. So that was like my plan for if I got three to eight and that was what I was most excited about. Um, my one seat, I was going to do Doomsday. I don't know. It's it's When I have Lotus, I, it's really hard for me to not play Doomsday. Uh, I had a Salvager's Doomsday list that I was pretty excited about. Um, but again, didn't fall, didn't happen. And then in my two seat, it was actually the one that I was like most open on. It's kind of like, if I get Ancestral, I don't know what I want to do. I know I want to get like counter spells and then probably go into Merfolk um, was my plan. Uh, but I also had a really interesting wheels deck that could fall into any of those slots right so that's that's the one that i kind of fell closest to in the end uh but i chickened out a little bit and i'm sure we're going to talk about that right but having a wheels list with uh hull breacher and narset felt like it was just like okay that's kind of the dream um mostly because of shieldred got me really excited about that list uh but you didn't end up playing shieldred did you no okay. so yeah well, well yeah that that's the issue is is uh is i think that i i have a lot of regrets about this i ended up going three four it was fine i i think that I should have gone four three if I played moderately well, and I should have gone five two if I played at like in my top ten percent. Mm -hmm. um, 
with this list. So I, I don't think the list is bad by any means, but I do think that it was not... I, th- I think I made several draft mistakes. Right. Uh, well, uh, so more so than play mistakes. Well, let's move to the list, right? So ostensibly, you are the, on, the the most unfair deck in this setting, right? We talked about this in our in, when we flipped the interviews, right? Uh, Correct. That this was a pretty fit set of fair magic. Yeah, there's um, Tinker, but beyond that... Right, but I mean, but much. he was value tinkering, right? Yeah. Like, he was tinkering, like, in my game, he tinkered for a Phyrexian Metamorph to copy something, right? Like, he was purely in a value tinker, which he and I are both high on, and it's pretty good. Correct. Um, so walk through your draft, right? So you're, you're, you're playing unfair magic. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I guess, like, looking looking at this list beforehand, like, the actual list I had, uh, I definitely didn't anticipate Oath of Druids. I didn't anticipate Channel. I didn't anticipate any of the green stuff. I was going to be, like, either a blue-red deck, if uh, if that's kind of what was open, with wheels and Reforged with Soul and things like that, or more likely a blue-black list that used Shieldred as the win con, um, but otherwise was just, like, a primarily blue-based wheel deck mm-hmm. um, that used black for disruption early and uh, clearing the way for the actual win condition of empty in their hand and then beating down with dark confidants and stuff. Um it didn't end up happening. The The spot that I actually did fall into, uh, I fell into this like high tide wheels stuff that felt okay. But I guess let's, looking through the actual draft itself probably is the easiest way to right. kind of talk about how I fell into this. So, this so you pick, in, you, you get the second pick. You go yep. ahead and take the ancestral seat. You know, you could just default and say, I'll take the eighth seat. I don't want it to be in the ancestral seat. There's but no way. You're just, I'm not passing ancestral. I, I think that like the first two picks are impossible to not take the seats one and two in whatever order you prefer. Well, we've or, seen it happen. It, it, I, we have. Right. I, I think that's just absolutely incorrect. Right. No, uh, right. I think... Once you're in seat three, there's an argument for the wheel. But oh, yeah, no, I, I see eight's the, it's it's one two eight. Oh, see, I don't even I don't know. I think one two eight for sure. Like I, th- I think most of the time I want to be in seat three. I eight. I love a wheel, man. Sure, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I, I'm less high on that. Yeah, I love a wheel. wheel. Wheel is how I play Magic. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I, I think that like for me at least, I'd rather right. have the high power at the beginning. Right. And and every turn on the swing back as well. Um, but anyway. Uh, I take ancestral because that's what you have to do. Right. Then it comes back to me, and I I get real thrown off by by three things. Uh, number one is having to fairy go in round two. So mm-hmm. thanks for that. That was going to be my next pick, and then I was like, it was also going to be Dan's next pick. Correct. My second pick was going to be time walk, which Dan also took. Right. So basically, Dan and I are in the exact same thought process. Right. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll just like draft the counter spell, the free counter spells like I was planning on and then Cody takes force of will and I'm just like shoot I can't get out of the blue like I, I, yeah you got ancestral you're not you're not you're not backbenching ancestral right if, if I had infinite time to think about this pick I would have said okay let's just like breathe for a second there's three really accomplished deep drafters that have signaled they want to be in blue do I really want to be heavy blue right. or do I want to lean away from it and just have ancestral as like a value card? Yeah. Right? Be like, nothing wrong with that. Totally. Know. And I, I think I should have done that. Take a Ragavan here, you know, go blue red. and then, <laughs> no. Right. Well, and the tricky thing there is I know Kevin's going to be red. Like mm-hmm. e- even before Brown one, you know, Kevin's going to be in mono red. Right. But yeah, like maybe a splinter twin Ragavan type strategy sounds pretty strong. I mean, uh, a class, do you get to cast a lot of little free spells you like, you know, it's, it's, it, um, Pyromancer Tokens isn't a deck you do a lot, but it's a deck that fits your style. I'm casting spells, I'm countering spells, I'm tempoing, you know. I would probably do Mesmeric Fiends and, like, do do Bitter Blossom Mesmeric Fiend. Right. Uh, do, do, like, a blue blue deck that happens to have a... Uh, uh, sorry, a black deck that happens to have a blue card on there. Um, but anyway, I take it, I take Force of Negation, and I... You regret it. Uh, by a lot, yeah. Because, like, Force of Negation is, is good in a reactive deck and really bad in a proactive deck. And seeing as I'm, like knowing I'm going to be a combo deck, right? I'm draft... I, I, like, anticipate going into a wheels deck at this point. Um, taking a force of negation that you can't use on your own turn is just, like, super weak, right? It's, just, when it's, I, it's really bad. That my 6-in-1 bug control list, I yeah. had force of negation, but I hated it. Yeah. Because I was a more... Uh, like, I often am a most more... I had some counter spells, but I was more of a board control. So I, I you know... <laughs> I think it's a really good card. I think it's a fourth round pick instead of a second round pick. And I'm right. just like, I am part of the reason why it's in second round because I take it really highly, but yeah. I think I'm incorrect about it. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is absolutely incorrect. I don't know what I, like I said, I think I probably should have just like vaulted into a different color. Mm-hmm. But if I did want to stay in blue, I think taking Hull, Hull Breacher here would be a pretty reasonable And Hull Breacher pick. is fine because you're taking the next pick. It frequently goes second. So Hull Breacher would make sense. Totally. Yeah, so then I take Hull Breacher back, swinging back around, uh, which says, okay, I'm going to be in wheels. Um, but at this point, I'm also thinking about running back the Merfolk deck that I had in 
the previous VRD. Right, and you're in a good spot for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, like, if I have the Force of Negation, I probably should go Hall Breacher into Merfolk. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, it, again, looking at this draft objectively now with lots of time to think about it. Um, and round four. We make it all the way back around. The Tinker gets taken. The Mana Drain is the card that I was going to take. Dan snipes it again from me. Uh, and I'm just looking at my list of here's every card in, in Discords and St. Lotuses that in the order they should be taken. And Oko's just sitting there. It should be like a second round pick. It's sitting there fourth round. And I, I just like, I, I know that I hate Oko um, because I, I don't want to draft Oko in a combo deck. I think he's like one of the best Planeswalker. Probably, I think he is the best Planeswalker. Um, I think that there are cards that give him a run for money, but like I think Oko is the best planeswalker. Uh, but it's just so bad in decks where you are trying to win in one turn. The reason why Oko is so good is because he lets you kind of have a like I'm gonna crush you and beat down. And I did that. I won lots of games off of Oko. Yeah. Uh, but it's just so different than the strategy I'm trying to go with, and it's not different in a way that forces people to have to react to him. They kind of just ignore him. So, question: Do you think that you're you know when you draft, you're a very metric based drafter, right? Like Correct. you, you yeah. love you. Like we, we all have our list, but you love your list of like these are in order, these are the numbers. Do you think that your your love of numbers you could should have gone gut over your love of numbers here? I think I should have, uh, yeah, I guess so. But I, I think it's less gut and more recognition of your play style. Yeah, recognition of what other cards I want to draft along with him, mm -hmm. and like, am I willing to draft an Uro? Right, like if right. I'm willing to go into an Uro list along with Oko, probably fine. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just. I knew I wasn't going to be going into a fair list or like a Brandon style list. If I if I could do that, if I were a talented enough drafter to be able to go play Brandon's decks, I, I think it would be better. And uh, I, well, and here's the it's not that you're talented draft, but here's another thought, right? Like we've talked a lot about you know my recent like I don't I'm no longer as high on three colors because I don't want to compete for lands. Right. You have long been an advocate for you don't want to compete for lands. Correct. Blue green by itself is not great. Right, like, sure. unless you, you know, so I think Oko is best actually with a third color. That makes sense. Like, blue-green often you either can't deal with creatures outside yeah. of Oko, right? Like, you can't deal with the boards, mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or you know, it's a permanent-based colors, and then you, but with Oko, do you want, you want a lot of counter spells? Like, I've drafted a lot of blue-green, and I think that as just a direct, I'm just doing blue-green. Yeah. I don't think it's the best. I think Oko is actually best in three color decks. That makes sense. Where you've got a white, a red, or a black to help out with that. So I think that that is another factor to think about in that. That Oko really, really shines in three colors. Yeah. So, so, so in I, I think that if I were to redo this draft, I wouldn't take Oko or Narset right here. I think mm -hmm. I would lean into Merfolk. Right. And I don't know exactly what the next pick is for a Merfolk deck. Uh but it's probably just counter spells of some type, probably. Yeah, exactly. Right, like you probably just draft whatever the next highest counter spell is, right? Um, or even like a probe, right? Probe, probe, probe. probably. That's pretty Where high. Where does probe even go? Now, probes. I mean, online probe goes really high. I don't know here. Where does probe go here? I, I let's see. Uh, so probe in general uh, goes around thirteen, right? So this right. would be very early for a probe. Yeah, but that's complete metrics. If we look at recently, Probe's actually been higher. And particularly, I mean, also in Discord, it's been higher. That makes um, sense. Here, I think it went after all the counter, after all the, the standard. Does it, does it even go? Yeah. Of course it goes. It okay. goes in okay. seven, go. 15. Fi yeah. So f 15. I don't know what. Yeah, well, we also have like Master Plum, who uh, Probe is to Master Plum like Urza is to me. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like, like, he has literally had Probe in like eight of those last drafts you know and often takes it like in the five six range i think taking uh taking tink or tinker had already gone right yeah tinker went uh yes tinker went and also managers had gone yeah i don't i, don't, I really don't know what to make, take next here but it's definitely i i don't i don't okay. know what oko I, I don't know what oko does for me i don't like it um has strip mine gone at this point yeah no strip mine has not gone strip mine went pretty late this one i believe yeah i think so too so many, like strip mine strip even. mine is yeah strip yeah. mine's pretty reasonable yeah um then it comes back around. I take Narset because I know I'm already in the whole Breacher right. plan. And this is about where Narset's fallen. Like she used yeah. to be in the two three range, and now we're all, people are like, ah, okay, <laughs> right. And I think that like yeah, she's she's top ten still, but no, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think I, she's top five still, even. But it's 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 you know for Walkers, top five for Walkers. I don't even know if that's true. 
And, and I haven't actually done my math lately. I need to revisit that article and, and, and do a recal because Oko, I think, moves past Karn a little bit with Karn being two now. Yep, and I think Minsk and Boo is in the category. And Minsk, there. Ooh, Minsk and Boo is up there. That yeah. card's so good. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so, so at this point, I know I'm firmly in wheels, right? right? So I don't know exactly what wheels are, but like I want to. I am not really worried about anyone else's drafting at this point. I'm out of the the counter spells race right. hasn't really happening. So I do think it is, and I'll, I'll like that. Like here after the twister, I do think at this point, if you if it's not you, and you're not going to shy away from three colors, I still think black's very relevant here for the Sheldred, yeah. and I think that makes it very viable. A green, black, blue wheels deck seems really good. Um, you know, because you get the birds, you get like you get the fixing, right? Sure. Like you get the birds, you get the fixing, and I, this, this is the trouble with green, though. Is like if you want to do that, it pushes you really hard into a green deck. Green splashes primary. the other colors. Right. No, that's true. True. So I, I've drafted that deck. I've, tr- <laughs> Trust me, I'm well aware. <laughs> I love bug in in lists where you can run fetches. I just right. don't love fighting over fetches. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so Narset and, and Twister, and then at that point, I'm just like, shoot, man. Fast bond is still undrafted, and people are taking crop rotation. Like, I need to grab fast bond. Right. You've got the wheels, so yep. you know. So fast bond was always high on my wheels list, but it was one of those like, there's no way it's gonna be open. Right. I, I was really happy to pick it up here. Um, the fetch land fight is already starting, and no one has taken prismatic vista yet. So I right. say, okay, I'm grab happy to grab vista. And you're in two colors. Vista is my is just as good as anything else, right? Yeah, better probably. Right. Uh, then. I, and this, I'm also like, I probably need more fetches given that I have fast bond. Like, it, it's pretty good with that. Um, but I, there's just like, Kevin has thrown me way off. Took breach in the fourth pick, and I don't know where time where the LED is going to go. So, so yeah, I, what's your thoughts on the LED here? That's one of my questions that I well, watching your draft. That's one of my questions. So LED, I think LED is it the, just the echo. Yeah, because uh, I know you're high on LED and echo. I think LED enables you to play the second best wheel, and vastly underrated echo of the on agreed yeah because you, you get the first activation of it for six if you happen to have the extra mana line around and right. then if not you can just use the back side of it but if you do manage to use the front side of echo or just mill it or anything else happens to it you can just like cast it from the graveyard randomly and just win the game right um it's it's bonkers i think echo of aeons is is uh i think it requires a lot of work to set up a deck for it but i think that it is a, a underdrafted card in that blue red wheels deck I had that had some interest. Echo was was a horse, and that was on your recommendation. So I know okay. you're you're high on that that combination. Yes. So LED, I I want for this. Like that's mm-hmm. the reason I'm taking it here. Okay. And also, I just don't know when Kevin's going to take it. I wanted if he's going to gonna take it. Yeah. Right. The, the reason I had all the red cards ready, like I was going to go blue red green wheels, uh, is for the breach. But then right. the breach got taken, and I was like, okay, I don't know why I'm going into red anymore. So. LED is mostly a vestigial pick from the blue from the blue red wheel stack that I had, right. um, but it, it does still enable Echo, and it's just a good card. And I yeah. know I'm going to do something with lots of mana, yeah. just like Quali- quality mystical here in eleven. I mean, that's nice. Yeah, the mystical mystical. I was pretty happy with getting there. I think that that's a card that often gets sniped from me because I don't value it highly enough. Right. So I, yeah. I tried to the, move it up the list. Enlightened is my is my version. I love. Oh, sure. I you know the decks I run, enlightened is going to be do you know do better than mystical for me most of the time. They're often more permanent based, and it always gets just like I'm like right behind where I put it at. Then someone someone grabs it. Totally. And then I see preordained still not taken yet. Um, th- this is a pretty gross spot for me where. We go remand brainstorm because I really want to brainstorm here, uh-huh. um, and and just Cody and Dan were eating my lunch all day, uh, but it, we, I ended up getting the mystical. I feel pretty good about that because mystical for the wheel is obviously the setup there. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was like, okay, well brainstorm just got taken. I need to take preordain or I'm going to lose all of the cantrips. So interesting card that could have been good in your list. Have you seen this? Have you thought about this card before? Or can proxy s- the new snapcaster? Kind right? of it. I mean, it's in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a good card. I. Yeah. Don't you, know if you I get a cash without paying its mana cost, so it's not snap. So right, but you have to pay a big cost up front. I mean, three mana, it. three three mana gets to rebuy you a preordain, a mystical, a veil, a channel. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I think I it's know. I think it's fine. Okay. I, I I don't I don't want to play creatures. Right, right, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better, you're gonna. Do you know you're an oath yet at this point? No, no, okay. I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, oath. I think I decide on oath literally the round I take oath. Like it, it, had, been, <laughs> it had been on my um, oath was like on my radar of like i love oath and i've been trying to make an oath deck work for literally years but it i can go on a long rant about oath if you want but i, I think it's basically like it because it's so powerful and irreplaceable it also becomes pretty bad in vrd mm-hmm. because there's no way to grab it 
easily con consistently right like you have to like mystical for it and at that point you're like spending two cards and you're setting it up on like turn four and then you're passing the turn and waiting for a full turn and you right. have to have those like, weird deck constraints so like i think it's pretty bad it's hard it's um, hard to pull off i mean it can be, it can it can work but it, it is you know it's not easy to pull off totally and it's, it's not a card that you can build a deck around i think i i, I, think, I think with oath you often want flash to be honest because like what if you draw the big targets anyway so flash like oath like I, we had like a one value flash list at that point like we had one that was pretty good that was flashing in like woodfall primus because it was like oath for primus and, fl and flash in primus and like other things like that so like sure. that actually had a pretty good success in one of the discords but like how much better would that be if it's natural order Man, that's true that's true <laughs> like, and, and then you have to play but then you've got to play creatures though right which that's is bad with oath. so natural order is bad with oath <laughs> like right. so that's what i'm saying is right. i think i think i'd rather have natural order over oath in right. that deck yeah so and that's the problem but oh it's so hard uh, it's, it's hard super hard but, but i think my deck basically fell into a spot where oath is very good and i was able to take it okay so okay. we can get to that but. yeah so um, you get the veil, nice value veil here. You know, Sam's in a lot of black. There's some counter spells, so this is good. Yeah, I'm a, I know there's three other decks that are going to be doing counter spell things. Also, right. I think that veil and just like hate cards in general are underdrafted. So I, right. I take the collector oof way too early here. I don't need it here. Right. Like, there's one other green player, and it's not. It's not there's for sure that I need two it. Two artifact decks, and I mean, oof was good against me, but the, like, the dumbest thing about it is no is still off my, on the table. Right, oof shuts off my combo half, but it, if if I really want it here, I should take null rod. Right, because like green sun zenith is not in my deck yet. Right, I, there's no reason I need collector oof particularly, and it's just like a wasted pick. Right, so taking a fetch land here instead would have been way stronger. Okay. Uh, losing the consider was actually pretty brutal because it's like I can take an opt, but consider is so much better than opt in my deck. Right. Uh, given that I probably want to do graveyard things in general. So this is one of those player evaluations, right? So we know that on the online ones, these considers and all these go much earlier. Mm -hmm. In these, Dan is often a primary drafter of those. Correct. So you know, if you have Dan in the draft, then you've got to up those a little bit in your in your calculus. Also, losing days was pretty sad for me because that's like one of the free counter spells that lets me protect myself as I'm going off, right. uh, which is really important to me. Um, but yeah, so, so losing days and consider to Dan was not great. Okay. Similarly, the probe was something that obviously is nice in my deck, uh, but I, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I need counter, I need fetches, even though I know I'm a two color deck, mm -hmm. because I want to be able to do fast bomb things. Right. And it's just really strong with that. Um, it also helps clear out your deck when for the wheels. Like, there's lots of reasons yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That, they're really good. Um, and then I take counterspell. I don't know. I just like I, I was like, what's the next best counterspell? I That's often think about counterspell, and I'm never quite sure that it's actually. It's yeah. absolutely incorrect to take here. Like double blue is way too hard to generate, and the hard counter versus uh, something like a mana leak is just uh, mana leak's better. Right, straight up in my deck. So. Okay. It's for sure incorrect. He takes my trop, which I was real salty about, and I think I swore it up or something at that point. I didn't mm -hmm. love it. Uh, but I take the breeding pool immediately because I need to have a fetchable source. Right. Uh, yeah. Now that I've taken the wood. And, and I remember watching your games, that, that came up a couple times. There were several games where you fetched, and you're like, I'm getting this breeding pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because somebody took my good. trop. <laughs> right. Because I, I knew I was going to be taking more fetches. So right. Like, I, I need to have the activation. I need to have it come into play untapped. Nice uh, late chrome mox here. I mean, that's. Yeah. I was super happy with chrome mox. Yeah. Um, there you get the mana lake still because Chrome Mox again really good with wheels. Uh, I wish I had Mox Diamond, but I couldn't make it work. Right. Um, Brandon's really high on that. Yeah, um, I did manage to get the mana leak right. Um, right. JVP. JVP was fine. It ended up being way worse because I was in the yeah, right, right. Um, but it still ended up being pretty. At good. this point, JVP is the right pick. Correct. I agree. But yeah, it ended up in a sideboard for good reasons. Yeah. Uh, Juari Disruption is a card that I'm pretty high on compared to other people. It's good. It's good. Uh, and I just... I've won some games with Juari Disruption. Yeah. Being, being able to just have that extra land slot be filled with a I, counter spell. I swear once is so undervalued and underplayed and like we just... Everyone just seems to forget about it all the time. I agreed with you until I played it. Yeah? Uh, I think it was pretty bad in my deck. Okay. I, I, think, I think there probably are good green decks that... Well, in your it. deck it's probably just grabbing a land most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Totally. It grabs a land and it's like... You could cast it for free, but it's right. just like, I think if I could, I would have replaced, uh, it, I played it in the sideboard, but in the, the times where I was trying to play it in the main deck, I would have replaced it with an island literally 80% okay. of the time. Okay. Okay. Um, probably more than that. I think it's worse than a basic land most of the time in my deck. In their deck. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, it's, like the problem is that very few decks want it. In those decks, it's very good. So it's a pretty low right. pick. That makes sense. Um, dispute, I think, is bonkers. So you picked the Irmical here. And wh yeah. what is your mind process at this point? So we, we've got the Fast Bond, but we're not a big mana deck. So have you made, is this where you make your decision where you're going? 
Let's see, because Emrakul was taken because I took Once Upon a Time, just happily going along my list, being a little sad that I've lost Underworld Breach. Mm -hmm. But it's like, all right, I still have a win condition. I'm, I'm fine. Then Brandon takes Brain Freeze in round 23, and my oh. brain breaks. And I just sit there, and I said, I need a minute. I sat there for probably two to three minutes. So Brandon is a, for those that don't know, Brandon, Dr. Pee Pee Poop of Pants MD, is a <laughs> massive, just casual brain freeze fan, right? And what I mean by that is he doesn't, he just wants the value brain freeze. He yeah. doesn't care about a co pure combo out. He cares about, I've got a... Uh, Academy, and I've got a you know four spells, and I'm gonna hit you for you know twelve cards, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's it's like the amount, and at some point in the middle of a long drawn out match, it's enough. Yep. But so he often has brain freeze in these decks, and it, it works for him. Um, but in, in this case, it can be very frustrating, right? Because you're like, I, I want brain freeze. <laughs> yeah, but brain freeze is my is my primary win condition. Um, and just to like go back a little bit in the draft to show. So Brain Freeze picked 36 out of 80, and even in VRDs, uh, even like modern VRDs, it's somewhere in the mid-30s. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was like yeah. watching it and being very careful right. to see where Brain Freeze would get taken, um, not accounting for the Brandon factor. Right. But uh, in round 20, when I take JVP, that's the moment I decided I'm a, I'm a high tide deck. Okay. Uh, so JVP was the decision of, okay, I need high tide. I want to be able to cast it twice. So right. Jason Vren's Prodigy is the best thing, that's given great, that right. neither sick. of the Snapcasters are left. Right. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll be, I'll be that deck. Uh, and then I'm like, I'll be a high tide Ooh, deck. That proxy with, with, high, with high tide seems mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, like it's it, like in my mind, arcane proxy, Jason's prodigy and snapcaster are all very similar cards. Right. And obviously like they're each have their own plays and different decks that they're better in. Mm -hmm. But in the decks I like to draft, they're all the same. Right. Um, so I'm like, I'll be a high tide deck. I have Jace to be able to cast it. I don't need to worry about brain freeze for a little while. Uh, and I, I just like am assuming I'm gonna get brain freeze. Right. It gets stolen from me. And I'm like, what do I do if I have 30 mana? And Emerald cool. seemed fine, right? Okay. It's like okay. that. Or... So you've made the so that's what this is. You've made the decision of the high tide at this point. Right? Yeah, yeah. Several rounds previously. Right, right. Uh, and I'm just looking for a win condition. And I don't know exactly how what I'm gonna do with Emerald cool, but I'm like, I can cast this card and it probably wins most of the time I cast it. Right. Uh, the the other part of that is that. Uh, if I don't take Emrakul here, like I fall into like taking a crappy like the bad Emrakul, right. or taking Cunning Wish into Brain, uh, Blue Sun Zenith. But like nah. I, I, I was trying to figure out a way of like how much mana can I actually generate off of a high tide if things go okay, okay right. to good. It was like the, the range that I wanted, right? And I couldn't get above like 20, 25. Okay. It's just like not reasonable to win with one of the other cards we were talking about. Okay. So Emrakul felt like about the only way to make it happen. How was Dig for you? you? You said about the double blue for Counterspell. Was the double blue for Dig? Uh, double blue for Dig is way easier. Okay. Because right? you, at that point, you cast Dig as And you don't way need it finding... on their turn. Yes. You know. Yeah, you, you find it as your win condition once you're already going off. Okay. Like, Dig, for the most part, was either let me draw cards after fighting a Counterspell battle and, like, read, get drawn to the deck, kind of a backup Ancestral. Right. Or it was, I am already winning, and I just, like, need to find a card. And Dig would find that hard for me. Okay. So okay. It, it was really good. Um, <laughs> there were a few games where I ended up casting it for eight because my graveyard had just been shuffled away. Uh, and it was fine there, too. Right? Like right. At that point, I'm already winning. Okay. So Dig was pretty good. I, I don't think that, like, this feels like the time to take it. it right. No, it, yeah. It didn't feel like it was an all-star or anything, but it was a good value card for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, basic role players here, some sideboards, some extra draw. Let's see. And then Dress, dress Down happened. Yeah, for Surge, basic role players. Time Spiral. Yeah. And then the high tide. Okay. Well, Frantic Search and then Time Spiral and then right. High Tide, which is, I think, the order. I was really worried about Frantic Search getting taken by somebody. There were just like wild cards getting snapped up all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you taking Sword of the Meek, like uh, Shark Typhoon getting taken. I mean, I, I'm often like, a big advocate if I just take the cards that I want to make sure I have and yeah. uh, not trust in other people. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Like after Brain Freeze got taken, I just like was way in my own head about it. Yeah. Uh, and I took Frantic Search. Brandon took snap, and I'm just like, oh god, what is happening in the world? And he, it was just a value snap, right? It right, did nothing right. for him, uh, other than just like be a good guard. But yeah, like I probably would have taken snap ten rounds later. But at this point, I'm just like, if I I need to take the cards I need for my high tide deck because they're all getting stolen from me. Right. Uh, Brandon, Brandon, and Dan are taking all my cards. I need to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just take all the cards I need, and then at that point, I'm like, okay, my deck's done. I have a bunch of cards that I will need eventually, but I don't need to worry about it. So right. I should take counter, take right. sideboard so, yeah, cards for a while. Nice run of hate cards here. Yep. Um, I 
chill. I keep casting it, and I keep like feel like I'm Charlie Brown with the football. The card's just not good. It's not even against mono red. It's not good. It's not great. Like it's if, if you turn one it against mono red, it's fine. But sure. like you know. Yeah. But the problem is, I think a lot of the decks that want it, like you're not like how much are you slowing them down to do what right? Like yeah. you're not because you're not trying to win and like. It's not like you're racing them, right? Like it's great if you're racing them. Also, the red the red threats have gotten a lot faster. Right. Or it's, they've got they've gotten a lot more aggressive. It's right? honestly probably good in like Merfolk because you're going to be you can aggressively. But but then would you not really just be casting a Merfolk, right? right? I mean, what's better, a Lord or a right, two drop right. doesn't do anything? Okay, right. so yeah, I, I, and I funny enough, I know you and I are big advocates for a lot of these color hoser cards, but this is actually kind of where I ended up looking through the enchantment based ones, right? Yes. Like. Like flash freeze, still good, right? Like I'll go grab a flash freeze because sure. like I can you know bring it in and it's just it is a solid counter spell for blue one, right? Sure. But I think a lot of these, uh, you know, even energy flux, I've lost a couple oh. games through flux. Now I still take flux. I feel like flux is good. I I think flux is busted. I think right. it's veil of summer level good, and I only take it this late because no one else is taking it. Right. But this card, this card in my mind should be top fifteen. It's just so good in a field where somebody is going. Uh, artifacts. Right. I, I don't think it's good in every matchup. I think it's good in literally one matchup. Yeah. But in that well, matchup, this is the card that well, I mean, like, comes about. You know, I was drafting artifacts here and I had to keep energy flux in mind the whole time. I'm like, okay, yeah. how do I beat a flux? Well, I'm going to combo off, so I'm not going to play everything out. I'm just going to, you know, that turn do the things I need to do, you know. Right. But yeah. no, absolutely. I mean, flux is good. Flux is still, you know, one. But I think even then, I'm slightly less high on it because I have had games where they're still able to just win through it, you know. Yeah, I, I haven't. I mean, I think maybe I'll get like <laughs> right. turned on to the light at some point. But against a deck like Brandon's, I'll just like, okay, I'm going to get an energy flux and put it on the table, and then we will sit here for three turns and I'll beat you eventually. Right. right. Uh, Carpet of Flowers is another card that I think is like particularly good in my list, but like very good in general. Um, yeah, carpet's good. Yeah. Uh, and then Arcane so Denial. I was trying to be cute. I thought Arcane yeah. Denial would be good with Narset and Hullbreacher. It's whatever. Right? It's not good. Right. It should if this had been whatever the rune snag or whatever the modern right. version of rune snag is, it would have been better. Right. Just a whatever the two mana counter unless they pay two. Right. And then the channel decision. Then the channel decision. This was I don't, I don't even know like I was just like I need more consistent ways to get Ember Cool given that like everything kind of fell through with High Tide like it's mm. still okay. Yeah. But I, like I, I didn't feel like High Tide was going to be consistent enough, so right. I needed a backup plan for getting Emrakul. Well, and sometimes just you know turn two channel Emrakul go is you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird that that happens against people sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, at this point, like, the draft is kind of just, like, playing out. There's nothing I'm really fighting over. Channel's, like, a big splash, mm -hmm. but it's not something that, like, it is very much a role player in the deck. It's not something I'm, like, excited to be in. Um, it just is good what the cards already have. Then I take Echo Veyance. Uh, no one else is taking it, but it's, like, such an important part of my strategy that I don't want to lose it. Right, like, right. I already have the Time Spiral and the... Uh, and you just never know. I mean... Time Twister, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's like, I, I also had a bunch of other uh, not good enough cards for, uh, let me pull up my list again. I had like Memory Jar was right. a card that I was like pretty excited into. Now Mastery is one that I was interested in. Um, but yeah, like these, those are the two cards that I was like, do I, how many wheels do I actually want? I ended up right. settling on just these three. Right. Um, but I think there's an argument for maybe playing one of the other, like the five drop one. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we get some fixing and then take Oath. Uh, Oath was very much like a uh, like a big grudging pick, mm. but I think it is like pretty good. Um, Mana Maze is incredibly bad. I played it once and thought that it only applied to my opponents. Yeah, uh, it, applies, it, applies it does not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it applies to everybody. So I immediately sided it back out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Mana Maze in a high tide deck would not <laughs> recommend. It does not work particularly well with high tide. Yeah, you know, we live and we learn, you know. Yeah, and then Gush. Gush is the reason. Right. Once I took Fast Bond, I was like, okay, Gush is the card I'm most excited about for this list. Right. It's in my top five cards for you're, you're a gushy. You're a gushy guy. I, I just, I'm in the school of Menendian, so. Yeah. Um, See time? How is it? So, Dan Zelinsky has a fun game he likes to play with me where every match he says, hey, was Seed Time good in that match? And every time I say, no, Dan, Seed Time is not good in that match. <laughs> and he's right. It's, it's a bad card. I've been real high on it for a long time. Um, and it's real bad. I just, I, I, it's, it look, if you read it, yeah. it reads it gives so you an extra good. Turn. It reads so freaking good. They counter your spell, you Seed Time, you take your turn, and then you kill them. And it never actually works. So. Um, you know what? The hippo grows wings to fight the condor. 
<laughs> and you learning seed time's not that great. I am. Just growing the wings. <laughs> <laughs> and fighting the condor that is dead. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's right. Seed time shouldn't be taken. Mission briefing was very good. Yeah. I, I was super impressed with it. Again, it's a backup high tide for right. when it goes away. Um, it ended up, I don't think it should be higher than where I took it. Right now, absolutely. It was pretty good. And then the persistent petitioner's backup plan did it ever become relevant? No, I no. never, I never brought it in. Right. Um, I, which, which we changed the rules so the persistent petitioner backup plan no longer works. We decided correct. to clean our rules up. We tried some cute stuff, and then we said, "Yeah, it's not worth it." Ugin, I brought in, never did anything. Weather the storm, uh, I brought it in against Kevin, never drew it. Um, Tendrils of agony, I wanted to have as just like a, uh, mostly a life gain spell, but also just a backup. Um, uh, black sources did you I have lines I have man. oh LED okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you got an LED what yeah. else do you need you're yeah, fine that's all you need yeah um, I don't know like a lot of these last picks I don't I don't know how good they were okay. I mean I think weather's good I mean, weather's a good weather was good but yeah. Uh, yeah everything else I'm just like pretty low on but overall I just like I ended up falling into this weird green blue deck that I didn't want to be in and I don't think I should have been <laughs> okay well so. let's talk about your matches yeah, so you end up so you end up three and four yes you lose. You beat. Um, you lose to. Let's see. I lose to Eric. Eric. You lose uh, to Cody, and you lose to Sam. Yes. So against Sam, we actually had like super interesting matches. Uh, we ended up having one slam dunk, one slam dunk, and then uh, one like grindy deck game where I end up losing because I forget that she has hasters in her deck because okay. I was like, do I attack for three extra damage before I kill her next turn? Like I had the win on board, or do I not do it? And leave back its blocker, and I decided to just attack because I was like, oh, there's no haster who drafted, forgetting that she had Nissa that I had seen in a previous game. Mm. And this is I'm calling this one just like round eight. I was real Fatigue, tired after right. a long day, and I just screwed up. Um, so so that that one was like we had some really good magic that happened in that match, but yeah, the end of it was disappointing for me. Yeah. Um, against Kevin, I just got rolled, man. Like, Kevin just just completely crushed me. He said it was the only deck, or the only ma- match where his deck actually worked, and mm. it worked. He just, like, completely shut me down. Sulfuric Vortex, and, and, like, turn two in both games. Uh, yeah, Vortex is good. It was really, really good. And then... Let's see. Eric. Eric. Eric was on uh, the was on initiative the deck. Initiative deck, yeah. Yeah, we, we had some we had some interesting ones. Um, yeah, I mean, I was your only in two. You beat me in two, but everything else went to three. Everything else. It was a long day. It was right. a super long day. My deck cooperated mostly, but it was like, it would either just like randomly win off of a channel or the games would last for literally 40 minutes. It's just like sitting there trying to figure out. Except for Kevin. Kevin, Kevin was only two as well. So. Correct. Kevin was a fast one. Right. Uh, but no, I ended up sitting there all day just like trying to run high tide math in my head. Right. Um, and C- Cody, so Cody, I just got run over by really good ninjas and he had counter spells up. Like Cody felt like a really bad matchup that I mm-hmm. happened to sneak one game through. Uh, and Eric felt like a good matchup where I, my deck just fell apart and just like I didn't draw well. Like right. I actually think that that's a match I should, I should win a lot. Okay. Um, like the initiative doesn't really affect me at all. It's just a matter of like putting me on a clock and my deck drew nothing in the turns where I needed it to. Okay. Um, but no, overall, like I think the deck at its core, like the idea of a wheels deck is strong. Uh, I don't, th- I don't think the green splash supported it right. at all. It's like, it happened to give me channel and oath. Um, but that was very much a consolation prize. Once I lost brain freeze and lost the underworld reach. Right. Uh, and I ended up three four with a wheels reanimator list. So I, I was trying that's, to find the thing to pair wheels with. Yes, because it just has to go with something. I just don't think the wheels is enough on its own. Well, and that's where I was at. Was I, I was like looking through and I'm like, how do I actually win the game? And this was right before I took the ammo cool. It's like, how do you actually win? Let's assume I get them down to zero cards in hand and I have seven and I have ten mana floating. How do you win from there? Mm. If, if like, and that's actually a hard problem. Right. Like, how do you win with ten mana and you having all the cards and them having no cards, but your whole deck has to be based around making that happen right uh and i found this the high tide solution i think it's fine yeah it's very much a you deck yeah <laughs> I, I strongly prefer I, I think it would be way better if this were shieldred dark ritual thought sees him to turok like having having yogs will yeah oh man just like unearth um or not unearth because you, you right. reanimate right um but like value reanimates, right? Like right. not getting archons of cruelty, but getting right. back Shieldra, getting back Thassa's Oracle. Like I think those would be like very interesting, right? Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think the black version of this deck is way more is way better, and how okay. we're going to draft it again and be forced to take wheels 
I would pull out my Black Wheels list that I have sitting there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just I got chickened out by Sam like definitively being mono black, right? right? right. Like I know she's she black mono. green, but she was very you know, yeah. early on just black, 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 black. You know. I just know that she's going to be heavily into black, and I didn't right. want to fight her, so I ended up like falling into green because nobody else was in green. Right. Um. Like she she went Dan into had a little bit. But... Dan had a very small amount, but like I just saw green was super open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turns green was out very open. It's open for a reason because it's bad. So don't draft green cards. It's the solution I'm taking away from this. <laughs> He's taking away the wrong solution, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Green card's good. Uh, this one did not work out, you know. Yeah, but I, I should just be less scared about fighting Sam. I basically let her have a free lane of yeah. all of the black cards. Right. And, like... I mean, sometimes you gotta go into a fight. Yeah. Stake your own. Yeah. I think it would have been a very different draft. Um, Absolutely. But, like, she she got... She had so long... Like, Dark Ritual went... When? <laughs> uh... Did Dark Ritual get... Oh, there yeah. it is. Okay, yeah. So around 20. 21. Yeah. And that's a top 10 pick, I think, uh, for me. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I just, like... I I shouldn't have been too scared of Sam, is what, is yeah. what happened. So. Sure. Yeah. Be, be, be the bully. Yeah. Be uh, the bully. Don't get bullied. I took Ancestral Recall, and that was bullying enough for me. No, no. We gotta be the bully. All right. Anything else you want to say about the deck? No, I think it's I think it's fine. I think okay. it underperformed both because of my play and mostly due to fatigue. Right, I mm-hmm. think it's just like a really this is a very hard deck to play, and I wasn't ready to do it after a full day. Um, but also, I think there's like a lot of there's something to be said about right drafting now. easy decks to play. There is. Uh, I play Belcher and Legacy for that reason. Yeah. I, either Doomsday or Belcher, depending on my mood when I wake up in the morning. So. Right. And one of those is not easy to play. Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right. Well, that's what we got. So this weekend we have. Um, St. Lotus 11. 11. 11. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, some new folks coming in, some returners. Uh, it should be a hot show. I'll see you on commentary. Uh, we kick off at 10, 10, 10 a.m. Central. 10 a.m. Central. So I'll be rolling in here a little after 9, and we'll kick off 10 a.m. Central and uh, get this party started. Have That's some right. Pointosaurus, have some Budweiser's, and uh, enjoy all of the wonderful that St. Lotus has to offer. So we will see you hopefully on the stream on Saturday. See y'all.